Hello, and welcome to the video blog channel, Down the Forest Path. Here I'll talk about the path of Druidry, what it means to be a Druid, and what our relationship is to the world around us. So to begin with, what is Druidry? I've defined it in my book, The All Went Alone, as loving nature and allowing that love to inspire you to live your life accordingly. It's about a deep reverence for the natural world. It's about finding our place in the natural world. It's about seeing that we are a part of the web of existence. We are a thread in the tapestry of life. We're not separate from nature, but an integral part of it. And we have a huge responsibility to work honorably and sustainably for all of our futures. Druidry is all about relationship. Everything is interconnected. We simply could not exist were it not for other life forms on the planet. All life, in scientific circles, come from single-celled organisms. These single-celled cell organisms evolved into life as we know it. We all have a common ancestor. Yet we are constantly bombarded by the dualistic thinking of modern culture. We feel that we're separated from nature. We feel isolated. We feel isolated from nature, from the gods, from our ancestors. And it's often reinforced. It's reinforced through marketing, through secular culture, through various theologies, psychologies even. In most cases, this is to ensure that there's repeat business. There's power and normalization happening. For example, how many of us have come across the concept of the food chain? Humans at the top, everything else below. Yet I would posit that people who, have, people who adhere to this concept have never spent a night out in the mountains of British Columbia or swam in the ocean with sharks. Because then you'll know we're definitely not at the top of the food chain. We're simply a part of it. Like I said before, a thread in the tapestry. Druidry is about relationship, but what is relationship? Relationship happens when soul touches soul, when we're inspired by that meeting of soul touching soul where our hearts open out, communication is involved, and we manage to share our truths, being to being, whether that is with the stone, with the tree, with the clouds, our next door neighbor. We're all connected, and it's through these personal relationships that the Druid creates their worldview. They learn about the land upon which they live. They learn about the gods, the ancestors of the land that they lived on, in order to inform their druidry, in order to inform their spiritual path. Druids realize that there is no such thing as a thing. Everything is considered sacred. Everything has a value. There is a strong streak of animism within Druidry. We cannot objectify something so that it simply becomes a resource for us to use. Our spirit honors that spirit. Our soul touches their soul. And in that meeting, we realize the sacredness of all life. Many native traditions use the term brother sister, grandmother, to refer to other aspects of life, such as Grandmother Moon, or 
our antlered cousins, the deer. In that way, relationship is established. There is an inherent respect that is created. A community is created, an ecosystem, where we honor the crows that fly overhead, the birds that sing in our back garden, the moss growing beneath our feet. We realize that we have this common ancestry, whether we are bird or bee, fish or cloud, we realize we're all made of star stuff. And as druids, we have to remember this in every single thing that we do. We have to ensure that we're not falling into the constraints and confines of dualism, of marketing, of secular culture. We have to see the beauty and the awe in everything. We have to be inspired by that beauty in order to live our lives accordingly. When we do so, that thread is filled with an awareness of life that is so utterly inspiring. It's profound, and that inspiration is called Awen in Druidry, where soul touches soul in deep relationship, true relationship, sacred relationship is established. I'd rather focus on being open and honest in a relationship rather than worrying about issues of trust. The gods do not necessarily require my trust, but by working and being truthful and honest, a soul-deep relationship can occur. Over the last few years, I have worked deeply with the goddess Bridget. She came to me at Imolk, the festival of the first milking of the lambs, the sheep. She came to me as the land itself, as the British Isles. She was not a goddess of the land, she was the land. She's the bones beneath my feet, she is the solid earth, she is the flow of energy and intention that goes across from one end of these islands to the other. In the air that moves across this land, I feel her breath. Sometimes it's filled with the scent of the sea, just a mile over to the east. Sometimes it's with the rich scent of the heathland that lies to the north, or the leaf mold of the forests that lie to the northeast. The rain that falls is filled with her intention with her blessings. The sun that shines is filled with her nourishment and her joy. She works to her own cycles and I have to learn to work with her. She's not always giving. She's not always nurturing. She flows along her own current of intention. She asks that we stand on our own two feet and that we have the courage to help ourselves. She blesses my garden with light, but she doesn't do the work for me. I have to work hard in this garden to provide nourishment for myself and for the various creatures that live here alongside me in this environment, the ancestors that lived here before and for future ancestors to come. I have to learn to dance with my goddess, to follow her rhythms, to move with honor and with respect. I have to listen deeply, too, to her song, often called the Oran Moor. From that deep listening comes an understanding and an inspiration. It's the Awen that is sought after in the heart of Druidry. I cannot deceive my gods, for they're not omnipotent, but rather, the relationship just wouldn't work, it wouldn't flow smoothly, if it was anything other than open and honest. There's no room for growth, for change, unless we make room by letting go of certain things. We must empty our cup 
in order for it to be fulfilled. Years have passed and I'm still only learning, beginning to learn about this wonderful goddess and this land upon which I've lived for nearly 20 years in the British Isles. All too often in today's society we can feel disconnected from the land, from nature, from the world around us. Druidry teaches us that there is only one reality, this world and everything within it is utterly sacred. We can incorporate exercises to keep that connection strong, daily affirmations and rituals, so that our soul touches the soul of nature and we are inspired. Some examples of what you can do every day to remind yourself of that connection would be to watch the sunrise, to watch the sunset, to take the time to let go, to become one with the sunrise, with the sunset, and to let that sense of self fall away so that you can be integrated into the sunset itself, into the land around you. Similarly, you can watch the moon rise and the moon set, follow the cycles of the moon, watch the flow, watch the ebb of the tides as the moon flows overhead. Watch the stars wheeling overhead and keep track of what is happening in the night sky above you at any given time throughout the year. Even such simple acts as bathing can be seen as a deep connection to the realm of water. It's a ritual done every day. We feel water upon our skin as we wash our faces or as we brush our teeth. We can honor the element of water every single time we do this. When we live a life in gratitude for what we have, we realize how truly blessed we are. Cooking is a great way of is a good example of connecting with the land around you. If you cook food grown locally and organically as much as is possible, you'll feel a deep relationship begin to happen with the land around you. Getting back in touch with your food gets you back in touch with the land and the ancestors around you. When you're preparing your meal, know that what you are preparing will nourish you. And in doing so, learn how you can nourish the land back in a reciprocal relationship. These are only some examples of what you can do each and every day. The list is endless. Having that connection with the natural world allows us to live a life that is more honorable, that is more sustainable by taking the time out to pause and to nourish these relationships we think about what we can do to even further our connection to the natural world. And then we simply go out and we do it. We find ourselves blessed with the knowledge that is born from experience. And we are truly blessed by it. That's all for today. And I'd like to thank you for joining me. I hope that you'll come back for more videos. And uh, if you'd like to find out more about Druidry and what it is that I do, you can visit my website at www.joannavanderhoeven.com. Thanks, and I hope to see you again.